This week, the Australian Workers' Union has won a historic victory at the Fair Work Commission, ordering that farm workers are entitled to the minimum casual pay rate of $25.41 per hour. Joining us live is Minister for Agriculture, David Littleproud. Thanks for joining us this morning, Minister. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, Minister, this has divided the opinions on this historic win. What's your take on the decision? We've got to appreciate this is the independent umpire making the determination. The Fair Work Commission is a statutory authority separate to the government. Uh, we respect their decision. Uh, there is, this is a draft determination. There is still an opportunity for those uh, that don't uh, agree with the decision uh, to appeal it. They've got until the 26th of this month uh, to make that appeal. And then obviously the Fair Work Commission will consider those, those appeals and make a final determination, probably before Christmas, from what I understand, depending on whether there's more hearings required or not. From a government perspective, obviously, um, we want to make sure uh, that the independent umpire has the environment to make these decisions. We're obviously concerned that if this pushes uh, up a labour cost to farmers, that supermarkets actually make sure that that's reflected and is transparently reflected at the shelf, at the at the checkout, and if uh, if they don't, I think the ACCC really need to be all over them because supermarkets have a very strong record of pushing back on farmers and making them absorb much of increased costs, production costs, uh, and basically not supporting them in any way, shape, or form. Minister, this ruling will eliminate piece rates where a worker is paid according to the amount of fruit they pick. What are farmers saying about this? Well, peace, peace work will continue. It's just that the, the, the draft determination made it clear uh, that it wasn't fit for purpose at the moment and, in fact, that it was a little bit complicated in terms of how it was rolled out, the peace work, not only for the employer but also the employee. So the Fair Work Commission's made a draft determination that they need to change that, uh, that peace work can continue but as a minimum there is a, a minimum wage in which a worker will be paid. So there, that is um, heartening to see because farmers and workers, uh, some workers actually rely on the piecework arrangements to make more than the award. So it's important that I think what the Fair Work Commission done, has done is tried to strike some balance there. The National Farmers Federation are considering appealing this ruling. What's the latest there so far? Well, they've got till the 26th of November to make um, that determination whether they wish to appeal. Uh, obviously, I've spoken to the NFF. They're working through the document. It is a very complex document. It is a draft determination. So uh, there's a lot to be worked through and to understood the implications. Uh, I suspect uh, quite clearly that it'll, it'll have impacts on, on supermarket prices uh, at the checkout. And so long as they are passed back uh, to the checkout rather than farmers absorb it, then the independent umpires made their determination and we have to respect it. Minister, a labour shortage is also another issue. Can you bring us up to speed on what's happening there? Well, look, we've had uh, for now over 12 months 25,000 men and women from 10 Pacific nations basically sitting on the tarmac ready to come, uh, waiting on the states to agree to come in. Uh, this time last year, actually, uh, at National Cabinet, the Prime Minister made it clear that we would cut the red tape to bring not only Pacific workers but anyone else in, uh, so long as the states brought them in in addition to their caps and they and they and their chief health officer uh, told the Prime Minister how they were going to, to bring them in, we would simply stamp the visas. Public health orders are determined by state governments, chief health officers and premiers. Uh, so they've had nearly 12 months to get this sorted and unfortunately we've only brought in around 14,500 of them. So we've now got the ag visa um, that we're in bilaterals with four other countries and we're now, in fact, with the Pacific programs, we're now over 50,000 that are available to come into the country. So there's, there's uh, a lot of workers that can come into this country. We just need the states and the chief health officers who seem to be running the whole show at the moment right across this country to get uh, to some sort of uh, understanding and appreciation of the urgency of this. And these workers can come in. Uh, so we, we've had the Pacific Scheme going for over 12 months now and, and we cut the red tape just under 12 months ago. So the Premiers and Chief Health Officers have known for 12 months what they can do. But unfortunately, it's five to midnight and we've still got some states are trying to work out how they're going to do it. A British waitress won her legal case against the Australian government's backpacker tax that was announced on Thursday. Do you think, Minister, that this could set a precedence for uh, more travellers who have worked and paid tax while in the country? 
Well, it pertains to eight countries uh, that we have special tax arrangements with. Uh, so obviously we respect the High Court ruling and, and we expect the ATO uh, to make remedy as per the ruling. And I understand the ATO is working through that. I think there's around 74,000 uh, workers, foreign workers, uh, that were here under the Working Holiday Maker Scheme uh, that are eligible for this. And obviously the ATO will have to work through how they remedy that. But uh, it, it has clearly defined the law as passed through the Parliament and, and and obviously, those eight countries have a separate uh, tax arrangement with Australia than what the rest of the world does. So uh, it, it isn't broad in the scope of uh, every backpacker. It is only those eight countries uh, that we have special arrangements with. And, and we're expecting the ATO to settle that and get on with the job of, of that determination sooner rather than later. And finally, Minister, you are at home in beautiful Warwick in Queensland. You're in isolation.